All right, of course, Fan Expo happening here uh, in Vancouver, and that means lots of really interesting people to talk to and, uh, and hang out with, and that's certainly the case with our next guest. He does a lot of different things extremely well. He certainly does. Uh, of course, he's here in town, as you know him from Star Trek, as Q, John Delancey is joining us now. How are you? I'm very well, thank Or you. if you're a, a lover of symphonic music or the symphony, people yes. would know you in yes, that yes. guys yes. as well. Yes, that's true. Let's start there since he brought it up. You just completed the most interesting thing uh, for kids with the symphony. Yes. Uh, um, uh, Dr. Seuss wrote a, uh, has written many things, and he wrote a thing called The Sneetches, which is really about yeah. intolerance, about the, the, these two birds, one who has stars on their belly and the other who doesn't, and the ones who have stars think that they're really great, and the ones who don't think that they're not. Um, and um, uh, Sid Sobel, a doctor in, um, in Rochester, New York, has been telling the story to his children and his grandchildren for years, and he is of an age now where he felt that I want to leave something behind. So he commissioned the, um, a, a new symphonic work, which is a big deal, yeah, yeah, to yeah. commission a, 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 well, a, you know, a, a composer to write a, a piece for a symphony orchestra. And it's the Sneetches and um, Lorenzo Palomo, who's a uh, Spanish composer, wonderful composer, uh, wrote it and we premiered it at uh, Oberlin. Uh, how, yesterday. How amazing yesterday. is it to premiere something? I mean, you know, because symphonic music, I mean, obviously, it, because it is so complicated and, and people are working in the field all the time and they're creating new music and everything, but to, to have that moment where it's the first time uh, well, that it's being presented, it, it, it's got to be It was great because we had originally heard a two piano reduction, okay, just yeah. two pianos playing it. And all of us are, and, and I went there to do like a little workshop of it. And all of us are wondering, well, what, what's it going to sound like? What's it going to sound like? And Lorenzo was there, he had flown in, and he's going, you will see, it's going to be marvelous, marvelous. <laughs> but, you know, we didn't know. I mean, yeah. it was still two pianos. So. I'm dying to hear it now because oh, Dr. Yeah, 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 is quirky, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, Going into and and the uh, the Oberlin Orchestra, they're 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 students, but they're really at a really really high level. And I hear a lot of orchestras. Yeah. Um, we started. They started to play it, and now we're hearing the music <laughs> for the first for the time. first time. Wow. And all of us, I mean, Sid and, and yeah. Lorenzo and I, we were like. Oh my God! And Lorenzo was like, "What do you think?" And we're going, "This is good. The this is good." Right? Yeah. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Now we yeah. have to talk about something else, and Mike's going to have to plug his ears because he's behind on Breaking Bad. Loved you on that show. That's fine. Uh, talk about you. it. I'm almost. I'm yeah, going to yeah. be there soon. So. Well, I mean, you really uh, have done. We're talking about Dr. Seuss. We're talking about Star Trek. You really do everything. Breaking Bad is such a unique show. Yeah. Uh, what was it like to work on that program? Well. Uh, the difference between that program and many other programs is that is that it starts at the top with the wonderful writing and the attention to detail and it goes all the way through all of the shooting day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you really, when you walk on a set like that, you know that you're on a special set and people are really work, trying to work at their, at, at their top. Yeah. Um, the storyline that I was involved in <laughs> was a really sad one. It was very sad, tragic, yeah. 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 But so, it's interesting how all the characters oh, get tied in, yes, and that's and the writing. Yeah, that's right, and that's the writing. Thank you both for being so we oblique. <laughs> so <laughs> oblique in your well, description. Did he ever mess Vin up? Vince is, is sensational. I mean, he's sensational. Yeah. And uh. all of the actors are terrific, but let me tell you, it starts with the writing. If the writing isn't there, you can yeah. never really elevate much more than what your personality is but if the writing is there you can take well off. and this is a perfect segue into uh, you know what is uh, probably the best omnipotent character to ever appear on television uh, Q because it was so beautifully written but also the humor that you found in that character was just beautiful was that written into it or was that something that that sort of it, it wasn't originally written into it um, and it's I, uh, there, are, uh, probably that's the one thing that I can honestly say that I brought to the to, mm -hmm. to the mix. It, it was not there on the first one. Uh, I, I tried to bring it in a little bit. I, I'm a great believer that um, if you mix it up, you know, it, once the audience understands what the trajectory is, you know, and they go, oh well, we're over here, but he's going to end up over here while I go and have a sandwich, <laughs> yeah. and when I come back, he'll be here. Yeah. Um, if you break that up, then they actually can't go away because they're going, this could change. What is he going to do? What's yeah. he going to do? Um, uh, in this case, um, I played him like a, you know, an omnipotent being 
who, uh, you know, who knows everything with clay feet. Right. You know, you know, <laughs> an that, omnipotent being, but too stupid to know it. Yeah. Uh, you know, that and type of thing. And very theatrical, which you are too. How uh, much yes, fun right. uh, was it for you filming cue, but exercising those chops as well? Well, it's great fun. Yeah. It's great fun. Yeah. And, did, and being cast in something like Star Trek, nobody ever knows the longevity of a, a franchise, of something so iconic. Yeah. But what was it like for you to be cast in that show? Did you think we'd be talking about it today? Did you know oh, it no. was something special I've actually like heard that? a little bit of the story, uh, or I read a little bit of the story in one of the interviews where you're talking about just the whole casting, and, and you really didn't... Nobody I you didn't show to. You I, got, no I got called to, 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 to audition. I had, um, I was doing play at the time. I yeah. was doing Terra Nova and I was playing Amundsen, one of the, the, the explorer who yeah. discovered the South Pole, a very big, dark, powerful figure. And they called me up and they said, uh, you have an audition for tomorrow at 4.30. I said, listen, I'm in a play. I can't really just leave. You know. I didn't go to that audition. <laughs> a week later, I got a call from my agent saying, you didn't go. Well, there's, you know, there's a guy who keeps on calling for you, a producer. He would like you to sh show up. I said, if you could make it lunchtime, I'll be able to go. I went there. I did the audition. I walk out. A big guy, bigger than I am, comes, walks out with me, and he says, you make my words sound bigger than they are. Or, you make my words sound better than they are. And I go, oh, you must be the, the writer. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> he said, I'm Gene Roddenberry. <laughs> and you know what? You didn't know who he was? No, no idea. idea. Really? No idea. And he said, well, we're going to be seeing you. And I thought, I gave him that, you know, this is not my first barbecue. And yeah. I was like, yeah, I've heard that before. And I hit go for the door because I've got to get back. And a guy, another gentleman comes up and he says, I'm the one who's been calling for you. This is a payback. I go, what? Payback? Yeah. For what? And he said, about four or five years ago, I was laying on my back in a hospital of a quadruple bypass operation and every day you would come on and you would make me laugh when I thought I was going to die. Daytime television, You maybe. got it. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. right. Days of our lives. <laughs> and, uh, and they're going to hire you. And then uh, 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 we don't have enough time for the but rest of the story. But at what point did you realize wow, that it was though. that it was that it was Gene Roddenberry who had, who had said? Well, you know what? Because you couldn't I, go I was, home and Google uh, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I went off, I went off to Japan to do a show, and then I came back to do Star Trek. I did Star Trek. I mean, we're three days into it, and and I'm just watching a setup, and the um, and and I hear behind me. You have no idea what you've gotten yourself into. <laughs> and I turn around and, and I and said, <laughs> and I said it was Gene. I said, oh, hi, Gene, what are you talking about? And he goes, oh, you'll find out. Really? He so, knew even then. So here it is, 25 yeah. years later, and we're talking about it. How I'm finding these, out. How many of these do you do in a year, sort of the fan expo? Because I, I would think it would be important to. I do, I don't know. Five or six. Because in between all your other work, right? I mean, you're acting, uh, the symphony, you know. All I, I like to do them. Um, I do as many as I can. The, the big issue is, and I actually heard it from one of the original cast members. He said it and it made a big impression to me. He said, he, he, he was saying, I might have made a mistake to turn these things into my work. And I just thought, ah, that's a really good right. thing to say. Uh, but it must so be I've never so done that. It's so nice to meet the fans in the way that you do. It, it is. They it, it, love it, it, you it is. So much. You know what it is? Is you yeah. do a play, right? Just imagine you do a yeah. play. You come back. You get out of makeup, and you, you know, and you open the stage door, and there are you know half a dozen people. Well. Yeah, <laughs> it's the same thing. People that that's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, the only difference is, is that it's for, in some instances, shows that were 25 years ago. Yeah, yeah. but that's a beautiful uh, honor to a legacy and a continued legacy in this case as well. John, what a pleasure! Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Really Thank nice you. to talk Thank to you. you. Continued nice success, you. my we're friend. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more right after this. Don't go away. Yeah, right. Don't go away. <laughs> Don't go away. Do not. Do not.